what's up, Facebook? I don't say Facebook or uh, this YouTube. I live so many channels. I'm sorry, man. What's you know, good well, anybody gonna be on the day gone. I'm it's sorry, your no. boy Cliff <laughs> and your girl who? Shan. And we are not on Facebook. And we, we are not on, on YouTube, YouTube, baby. Yeah, we back with the family, man. Don't do us like that. Don't scare me like that. What's thought, going on, family? I thought he needed something to drink or something. <laughs> you know what? Stronger drink or something. Oh, All right, you do. <laughs> We're going to get into some, uh, another Joe Rogan. Uh -huh. um, so Joe Rogan is shocked to learn about Tom Soul's wisdom. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna, he's going to find out some more about him. I mean, we were introduced to him, you know, when we started the YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. the, the knowledge bank, of course, you want to be able to spread that news yeah, about yeah. who Two Tom Soul is. Exactly. So yeah. Joe Rogan is shocked to learn about Thomas Sowell. Let's, let's do it. So, uh, do you know Thomas Sowell? I know that name. Why do I okay. know that name? Thomas Sowell is a big, uh, famous conservative. He's at uh, Stanford. Um, he's at the Hoover Institute, I think. Anyway, so, you know, within this, I mean, first, just to set all this up, we should set up briefly how does culture work, right? And the way culture works is, is that, it, like genetic evolution, it works based on blind copying. So what ends up happening is, is that you are in awe of people, right? You look up to people, and so you blindly copy the things they do. And specifically, you start by blindly copying from the outside, and then you work in. Thomas Sowell is a black guy, right? Okay. And Thomas Sowell has, for years and years and years, been trying to fight racism. But he's been trying to fight racism by having a conversation about culture. Right. And the fact that there are essentially two different sort of, you know, to, we're speaking broadly here. Right. But this is for the purposes of communication. Um, we're going to tell a simple story to start off with. Right. So broadly speaking, he puts two different cultures of people with dark skin next to each other. And one culture is these people from the West Indies. And one culture is this peop group of people who grew up in the South with slavery and all that sort of stuff. Now. What one group, the West Indies group, does really well. So a, a lot of the successful black people, people like Colin Powell, are originally from that cultural heritage. The other group is the group that you find in ghettos and African-American communities and all that sort of stuff. They don't do well, right? They don't get good education. They, you know, shoot each other. There are all these sorts of things. And the reason why Sol has been telling this story is because he's been trying to say, you know, when liberals look at the people in ghettos, they say, ah, racism. That's why they're not succeeding. And Sowell is saying, no, it's not. Because if you look at this group from the West Indies, they also came from the experience of slavery. There was slavery in the West Indies. They are also black, so they also face racism. And yet they do well. So it has to be something else. And that other thing is the fact that these black people who are in the South, there's always been a big question, were black people robbed of their culture? Or did they preserve their authentic African culture? And what Sowell is saying is that they were robbed of their culture, and so they picked up the culture of the people around them, and the people around them were rednecks. And if you look at the white redneck culture and the black redneck culture, they have a lot of the same values. They don't particularly respect education. They love Jesus. They use violence in their conflicts, and um, they, you know, there's there's just you know a lot of the same values and a lot of the same outcomes and even ebonics which is you know black english is actually all from the west of england so it's actually this what it's from the west of england so for example if you go to places like I'm cornwall um there used to be this amazing um uh these amazing ads on british tv right for this uh this devon custard or whatever and they would always say devon knows how they make it so creamy and they all talk like this right and so it doesn't sound like black english but they do say things like i be doing that and we be doing this and you be doing that and they be doing that and so there's <laughs> i'm sorry he's an <laughs> apricot <laughs> he do where's where we go oh, he does <laughs> The use of that copula B, right, where instead of saying I am, you are, he is, she is, they are, they just say I be, you be, we be, they be, which is the classic feature of black English, African-American vernacular English. Right. Now, <coughs> the point is, is that... How, mind blower. Mind blower. Now, let's imagine that how do you think that Thomas Sowell has been received by liberal America? 
not well. Not right? well. Not well. And so, for example, Sowell has a book called Black Rednecks, White Liberals. Okay? And his whole point is that, you know, if you actually, and, you know, again, like Sowell is, you know, he researches the shit out of this stuff. He really <laughs> does his work. Now, if you, if you look at the experience of African Americans after slavery, after slavery, they do really, they, they start to make real progress, right? And a large part of the reason why they make progress is because you start to get a lot of people from New England, either, you know, black people from New England or white people from New England, who come down and sort of reshape the culture. They create these schools and they're teaching those New England values, right? It's those Puritan values of hard work, tenacity, all of that sort of stuff. And so there's all this progress. And you have people like Booker T. Washington, and Booker T. Washington was an actual slave. And then after he got his freedom, he got to go work in a salt mine, which is literally the worst job ever. And in Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, he tells this great story about seeing a schoolhouse, right? And that, you know, he thought that going into a schoolhouse was about as close to heaven on earth as you could get. Whoa. Like, this is a dude who wanted an education really, really badly. And that's a lot of what you find in the, you know, early black experience in, you know, the post-slavery period. And in fact, you know, blacks, you know, before sort of World War II actually had higher rates of marriage than whites, all of these sorts of things that, you know, are now supposedly a problem. And then there's this turnaround, right? The black experience starts to go south, right? It starts to get worse. And what year is this around? This is post-World War II, right? So, um, so post-slavery... Black people experience uh, a rebounding. There's They're starting to make some progress. There's ambition. Progress. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if in terms of books to read, like, you know, just of because a large, you know, a large part of what I'm trying to do in general is really let's move to the place of all people are created equal. Like, let's remove all these stupid distinctions. Right. And really live that principle. And the problem is, is that in order to really live that principle, you need a new narrative that beats slavery. So, you know, it's not, if you go and talk to racists, you can't just say uh, racism is bad. Like, that doesn't destroy racism, right. right? What destroys racism is when you make sense of the things that they know, right? They see, you know, people who are violent in the ghettos, or they see crime, or they see a lack of education, or they see that Africa is poor. And you're able to tell a better story that makes sense of the things that they know, but also comes out with the conclusion, oh, we actually all have the same potential. Shocked about all the facts. <laughs> how he summed it up, I don't know his name, but how he summed up, you know, Thomas Soul. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Very he awesome. did a really good job. I mean, he he, he put some really good sticking points in yeah. there. I tried to make notes as he was talking as well. I like, I, I love the part um, when he was talking about Booker T. Washington. School. Mm -hmm. I, I, I try to write it down. School is the uh, closest thing to heaven okay. something like that <laughs> the value of education yeah, yeah like for me that was like a whole thing you know i saw that me getting you know done with elementary um as an accomplishment and then high school and then middle school i mean i'm, I'm sorry uh <laughs> elementary middle and then high i saw those as accomplishments i mean i mean and him being a former slave to being able to go to get an education uh, of course, I know it wasn't easy after slavery still, but just having the opportunity to be able to get an education. Yeah. Because, again, that's important. Um, but, yeah, okay, so I think I've said in the other video, the Black Rednecks, so what he mentioned in this one. And, of course, the Ebonics from West England. <laughs> so Ebonics came from West England. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, what Thomas Sowers has... So as research, West England always, always uh, America. Yes. So in in our other video, it did talk about how it's transplanted. It's always, I'm sorry, um, it survives longer where it's transplanted. So when mm -hmm. it came over from um, the British or in from England, yes, it's gonna stick around a lot longer. Wow. Wow. Good information, man. Good source of information, and that's what it's all about, man. Let's like educate real? ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And that's the biggest thing, educating yourself. Yes, and I ran out of room on my paper I was trying to write on. I see. So, <laughs> you take it. I'm taking notes the and everything. You're by me. You took my pen. And I I'm sorry. Okay, I have two. Oh. 
You got two pens. I got both pens. Yeah, I can't. I have nothing to write with. I'm so sorry. Here you it's go. all good. It's all good. I, won't, go. I almost says no. It good, says but, uh, no. It says wow. It says I'll wow. give you the one that says wow. Oh, okay. Thank you. That was one of my um my prize pencils. It says wow. Okay, okay. but yes, good information. Yeah. Um, wow. I just I really want I really want to watch that again. Just to just to be able to you know take in everything because I ran out of I ran out of ran out of space, mm-hmm. and in the West Indies with those um people some of those people being taken as slaves and then the, the Southern in um Africans being also taken as slaves and then trying to fight racism yes it's going to yeah. take a conversation about culture yeah I mean because. How can you really fight racism if you don't know the backstory, the true facts, or the true backstory of it? Yeah, yeah. You know? And the thing is, you know, if you look at um, one report, the, the video that he was talking about, it was saying that how they stopped, rec- they couldn't get jobs. Yeah. You know, the red neck, red, cracker red necks couldn't get jobs, mm-hmm. right? You know, but then people look at them and say, hey, we, we, we hired somebody already for the position, or we rent a department out, you know what I'm saying? So they couldn't get a job, but the thing is, is that it's like they have to stay in that same community. They only learn from one another. But the thing is now is that you can get outside your community. You know what I'm saying? You have technology. They call smartphones. You know, call smartphones. You, get out, you, <laughs> you know, and it's about ed- getting education. You can get, you can educate yourself. As simple as that, man. So there's no reason why you should be still feeling like that. I can't get ahead. Yeah. Or I, you know, or this is how it's gonna be forever for my mm-hmm. for my life, man. Now I understand that some communities you have gangs, you know, saying you have bloods and crips. So you actually dealing with that. So trying to escape that yeah, now, escape yeah. That, you know, what I'm saying and it's like you have to, you got to choose a side or what neutral colors. You know, if you're red, red, and it's, you know, it's you got, crazy that it has to it's be real that. Crazy. You got communities that's like that, man. Different areas that's very rough, man. So you born? Are they still doing that in 2022? Yeah, it's, it's it's sad, man. It's sad. Certain communities, man, the gang activity is v- is very heavy. So you have to, um, you know, kind of. But when are we gonna? Your color. We gotta grow past that eventually. Yeah. Like we gotta grow past that. Like I'm serious. Like that's like y'all ain't making no money doing that. And mm, okay. I mean, how many murders you see in in, in in Jacksonville? I mean, it's every day. Uh, like a young day. Person, young person get murdered. This young girl got shot up what sixty times. They shot a cop sixty times. But a lady, and it's young just lady, no man. Reason. You know, that, and that um, was crazy. Just in the wrong neighborhood at the wrong time. The other days, what, somebody got shot and sitting in, what, um, the McDonald's parking lot. So this stuff is real. It's, you know? it's, it's sad. And it's they, sad. they actually think that what they're doing is, is right. Fighting over territory. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's sad. And it's like you're a prisoner because you're in the middle of this, this, this hood mentality or this ignorance uh, like ghetto this, mentality, you know, ghetto, you know, which so, is what we used you know, to say. You're in the mm-hmm. middle of this, and you stuck. It's like you're stuck in it until you're able to but get. But you don't out have it. to be stuck in it. You, it's, you it's, listen. You're actually stuck in it until you get out of it. Yeah. As if you make it out of it. It's gonna be your choice. Think about it, because you make it hit by a straight bullet. Uh, you know where I was where I was raised. That man, it was shooting almost every other night, man. So when she was raised, that she had to worry about that. You know, so that's what I dealt with. So unless we went home with my mom, and then we were in that area of yeah. town where it wasn't the best. But yeah, staying at grand at the grandparents' house in that area, I mean, it eventually got, you know, ghetto. I, I don't want to say it turned into a ghetto, but the people made sure that, you know, that kind of, you know, had these little different, I guess they, they kind of like had HOAs before HOA was a thing. When they started, you know, really getting out in the community, hey, those people left. You know, the drugs in the area left. Um, the shooting and the violence in the area left. Yes, but it was still around the community. But that community, oh no, you you know we not having that over yeah, here. Yeah, we have a group of people that pull together. But yeah, you know what I'm saying that they, but they pulled together. That was the thing. People that saying snitches get stitches, then nothing's going to change. Really, stitches get stitches. But yeah, they just pulled together, and that's all it took for those people just to leave and say like, okay, we we, we not going to take it over here. People that want something. Yeah, and that's all it takes. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Wow, YouTube. All right. Well, that's us giving our two cents. Yep. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And check us out later. Baby, a peace.